My name is Sherman Hickam, and this is my Aviv story. In 1962, I joined the Marine Corps, and I was like 17, and had to get a note from my mom. I spent about three years in the Marine Corps before Vietnam broke out. And I went through sniper school there. As a matter of fact, it was the first sniper school. This was in the beginning of Vietnam in 65. Uh, in 66 was when I was over there. My first experience uh, there was, you know, I was like still kind of green as far as combat was concerned. You know, I'd been through all this training and stuff, but till you get there and, and uh, rounds start flying, you, you don't have a clue. We were out guarding a down helicopter uh, that had gotten shot down and it had a, a, a it had a bunch of Marines on it, and so we were going out there to help them as a, as a, as a platoon. We were getting incoming fire from all kinds of shit, 50 calibers, all kinds of stuff, and this mortar round go, whoop, and you could hear it, boy, and it was like I snapped too, you know, and I was going to get up and, and go over and lay, and lay down, and this mortar round, when it went off, it, it landed on him. We never, never, never found uh, much of him. Anyway, it, it, uh, it got me in the elbow because that was what was up in the air the mostly. I thought at the time that was the only, I didn't think I'd gotten hit, but when this round went off, it actually picked me up and turned me over. And I, but I was buried and stunned. I couldn't hear anything, I couldn't see anything, couldn't feel anything. I was just a concussion and, and it just, you know, it just fries your senses. And plus I'm buried in dirt. And uh, that, at that moment, I went from this green, you know, not an eye, you know, like everybody else in the world. That was, that's what happened for me. I turned off and turned on to, to killing, you know, that's what I was, you know, trained to do. Out of our entire company, it was about 178 guys at the time, there was probably me and about four or five others came back alive. And all of us had been wounded at least once. So it was, it was really, it was pretty nasty back in those days. It was really high high, you know, intensity stuff, you know, where you're shooting every day or getting shot at or bombed or mortared or something, you know. So, so that was another thing, you know, there were just countless incidences of, of uh, you know, people dropping around me and, and I didn't know until years later this, you got to remember, this is 1965 and 66. And at that time, nobody had a clue. They never heard the word PTSD, had no idea what that meant. Uh, when I got back to the States, uh, I didn't want to talk to anybody. Uh, we got uh, to the airport <laughs> in dress, dress, dress uniform and, and uh, we hear this car backfire and we all hit the deck. Everyone else were on the ground, you know, it's like shit, just, just reactions. So that's the kind of consciousness we were in. And anyway, it took me years of, of uh, well, everything that I knew to do, you know, went to try church and, and all the stuff that I had been brought up in and they had no answers for me to, to get through this stuff. And they didn't even know what PTSD was until the early 80s. And your cognitive processes don't work very well when you're in the PTSD, I don't know what you call it, world, I guess, because it is a world that I've been living in for like 57 years uh, up until recently. It's like you're always on alert, you know, you're always in Vietnam. You know, you're worried about, you know, your back and where's the first exit and is the doors locked? You know, you check three or four times every night in your house. You know, all these kinds of things that are uh, demonstrative, I guess, of, of PTSD, you know, I had them all. I had gotten to the point where I was hopeless and I was going to commit suicide. And I was going to drive off, I was going to go up in the mountains and drive off, you know, it was like a 7,000 foot drop down to the desert. And I thought, you know, I'll just end it that way. And, you know, what am I going to do? So I contemplated this for like days. And this buddy of mine, Vietnam vet, called me and told me that he and his wife had been to Aviv. And he said they were doing a study of Vietnam vets or, or veterans, and, uh, and, uh, and specifically about PTSD. And he said, why don't you give him a call? So I did. It, it's, I would like to say that I can start living, I'll have to say it this way, I, I can start living my life now. Because before this, I was living in, out of some other context and some other motives. It's a difference of night and day. My, my sleep has gotten better. I've gotten off the, the meds. Instead of going around and checking the doors four or five times a night to make sure they're all locked in the house, I go around and I check the doors once and then it comes up, oh, did you check? I, oh yeah, I checked the doors a while ago, they're fine. But I just had with Dr. Uh, uh, Mo yesterday 
and he gave me the final booklet of stuff that compared, and I took it home and compared between where I was and where I am. And the reason that I'm so free to talk about this today is because I have actual physical evidence that I'm different. It's not a point of view, it's not a mood, it's not a thought, it's not a feeling. It's like there is an actual physical difference in who, where I was and where I am. And Aviv is directly responsible for that. They're the ones that did it. There are so many, there are so many vets out there that are in the predicament I was in six months ago. You know, it's just, it, it, there are so many guys out there that are suffering from this. Other people have got to know that this, it's a heck of a lot better place here now and in here than it, than it was months ago. And I got to, I got to thank Aviva, I'll be eternally grateful. And uh, I don't know what else to say except thanks.